let me check a few things. I had a Okay, I see. I didn't switch. Here we are, friends. Sorry that uh, I missed to open this actually. So, thanks, friends, to uh, for advising me about this because I was not checking the output. So again, here we are, and now you should be able to start seeing images of the comet. So soon the poster will disappear and hopefully here we are, you will be seeing this in real time. Thank you, sorry again, but I will repeat what we did, but basically we have the comet and the telescope is now imaging this in real time, my friends. And uh, image after image, we can admire this comet which is now slowly leaving us. This comet is now slowly leaving the inner solar system after it reached the minimum distance from the sun. It reached the, the minimum distance from our star, what, and we call that perihelion. So basically from there, the comet is now going back to the outer solar system and then and then the comet will be uh, fading slowly and also because it will increase its distance from us. And uh, this comet is a little one, its nucleus is about one point something, about 1.5 kilometers in diameter. And uh, let's say that Comet Alley was, uh, uh, is larger than this, it's uh, of course bigger and uh, you, you may remember Comet Elbop in 1997, which was even much, much larger. But despite the small size of this comet, 1.5 kilometers, we are truly enjoying all this apparition. You have read, you have absolutely, uh, you, you know that this comet is also visible to the naked eye. But let me say this, it is not an obvious sight. It is not straightforward to see this comet because it is visible to the naked eye, but it is not very bright. And also because its dimension, the angular side of this comet is quite huge. It is twice the angular size of the lunar disk, to say the least. So it is as large as one degree in the sky. So the, its luminosity is basically distributed in such a large large patch in the sky and this is making the vision with the unaided eye not straightforward but the main problem here friends is that people is trying to observe with the, without telescope this comet from really uh, bad places from the city for example and from there trust me you are just wasting your time if you are trying to locate Comet Wirtanen with your own eyes without telescopes without binoculars just with your own eyes if you are lost in the light pollution because really this is not possible this is not the brightest comet we have seen in a century so it is visible to the naked eye only if you are far from the city. So you can see this provided you will select a place from where, of course, you can see the faintest stars and of course that will help you to see the comet naked eye. But the big problem right now here is another one, simply that the moon will be full in a few days, it will be full on December 22 and it will mean that the moon will be in the sky all night long with a lot of light going everywhere with a lot of light just uh, flooding everything and for this of course the comet will be completely i mean uh, covered by the light of the moon but wait for a few days and just for christmas when the moon will move in the second part of the night you will have a couple of hours soon after sunset when the sky will be dark enough again to see the comet but keep in mind it was already difficult to spot this with the naked eye if you are not familiar with astronomical observing and especially if you live in a city so go out go on the mount go on the hill go away from the city if you want to try 
and it will be even harder to spot this even under good skies day after day after the moon will leave the sky because this comet is leaving us as well and it is slowly slowly fading and i i really suggest you to look and uh, just concentrate to see how the comet is moving image after image again let me try to reduce the exposure time to 10 seconds and this will be will make possible for us to see images updating more often okay we will see less comet less comet because of the shorter exposure time and if you are familiar with photography you understand what it means shorter time you collect less light so the comet will be not that strong to see but at least we will update images much more often and of course if i reduce the exposure time i will give to the comet less time to move and this is why now the stars are showing us point i'm using 10 seconds one sixth of the minute I use it so far. But again, friends, I hope that you are enjoying this. And I think that the comet is making us very, very happy. I love what we are seeing together right now. Again, I am sorry if at the beginning you could not see this live. I, I mean, I was so excited to be able finally to share the comet with you that I forgot, simply forgot to, to activate the live images coming from the telescope leaving the poster anyway just to make sure that uh, you have everything i wanted to show i will show again the telescope we are using let me try to show it maybe we can show this in a little corner here it is the telescope i'm using you can see it on the bottom left and right now all the images we are seeing are coming from that telescope and you can see image after image the comet is slowly moving across the stars and i love seeing this because this is a clear demonstration that a lot of things out there are moving over time and uh, the sky is not the ideal place of uh, um, motionless things, okay? And this comet is beautifully moving in such a very elegant way. I'm honestly so happy that finally we could share this with you. Look how beautiful this hazy world is. And the comets are basically highs orbiting around the sun. And when they are close enough to our star, they receive high energy from our sun. The heat will make possible for the highs to sublimate and this will um, set free all the dust, all the molecules which were imprisoned again, like in a cage, in an icy cage in that nucleus. And so this way they will be free to live and this is why we see a coma around such a nucleus and hopefully the tails, of course, under the amazing effects of the solar radiation and the sun, the solar environment, okay, on the comet and on the dust and gas released by its nucleus once the comet is close enough to the sun to experiment a lot of uh, heat coming from the sun. And really, I cannot stay away from looking these comets every time a nice one is close enough for us to set such a wonderful show for us and really enjoy how the comet is slowly, slowly moving.
Dr. Luca Masi Virtual Telescope Project is now sharing live with you images of Comet uh, Virtanen. So happy that we are live right now. And again, I want to thank the technological partners of the Virtual Telescope Project, Unitron Italia Instruments, Software BISC, C-Web, Santa Barbara Instruments Group, Plane Web Instruments and Bader Planetarium. And I also want to thank all the international media which featured this live feed, making possible for the world to learn about this opportunity, friends. And uh, we started sharing live images after our previous attempts. Two of these attempts in the past days were not successful because of the clouds, but tonight, at least, we were able to observe the comet, even if, of course, an already bright moon is uh, strongly affecting the vision, but the telescope is power powerful enough that we can observe this uh, icy world traveling across the stars, I mean around the sun, but apparently on the far distant starry background with its dusty coma all around. I'm trying to adjust on fly what we are seeing here. And I really think that spying these objects is always, always rewarding. We've been sharing live events for a very, very long time now. The Virtual Telescope has been around for almost 13 years now. And uh, we were able to bring this beautiful, very beautiful astronomical events to the world every time something interesting was happening somewhere there. Happy that you are having fun with us. I really hope that this experience is rewarding for you. And I'm happy that at least we succeeded sharing this vision with you. Even if the moon is not offering the best, its light is seriously affecting the vision, we can really, really see Comet Wirtan and live, friends. Hope that this is for you enough to stay awake and for a while. I strongly suggest you to try yourself to observe this comet. I will also try to show you where to look, by the way, in the next night. And I'm just opening uh, my software to simulate where the comet will be in the next uh, night. And images are coming to you thanks uh, to the telescope you see in the upper left, by the way. Okay. Let me ask my telescope, my software, to properly set. Here we are. I'm preparing while you are still tracking this comet. I'm trying to to create a useful map for those willing to try to observe the comet and I'm doing this in real time. I should have all set as they say. So let me try to share with you where the comet will be tomorrow night. At least let me prepare this while I really want you can still track the comet, friends. This is what I find to be my priority. But tomorrow, December, okay, we are almost 
not tomorrow, looking at my clock. So let's give you a better opportunity. If you will look on December 20 at zero Greenwich time, just the beginning of the, the day number 20 of December, you will see the comet will be here. If you look on the upper left, you will see December in Italian and at one in the night, but Italy is one hour higher than Greenwich. So this is zero Greenwich time, December 20, and the comet, as you can really see, it will be there. Okay, you can easily recognize that portion of the sky. You can use the bright star Capella here just to be sure that you are locating the right spot of sky. You have Capella here, Aldebaran here, and Mirfak in Perseus. And this is a very easy to find place in the sky. And I believe this can really, really help you a lot to make sure you will be able to, to find the comet, okay? And the next night, December 21, the comet will be there. It is night after night moving to reach the charioteer here, Auriga, where Capella is placed. This is December 21, always at zero universal time. And of course, you can go ahead and just on December 22, when the moon will be full, and the moon is here, by the way, and then December 23, look here. On the Christmas Eve, it will be very close to Capella, and Capella is an easy object to find, very bright star, one of the brightest stars we have in the sky, and it will be able to help you to look it, even if the moon will rise uh, pretty soon after sunset. So you can try, you can really try anyway, thanks to Capella helping you to locate this comet. And then, just for the record, here it is where the comet will be on Christmas Day, at the beginning of Christmas, 25 of December, at zero universal time. But now I want to switch back to our live observations of this comet, and here we are, friends, again. And I hope that you are enjoying this vision. I see there are many friends. I must say that we had uh, more, almost 150,000 of viewers trying to observe this comet with us over the last few nights. And uh, even if the sky was cloudy, we could be, we, we were able to share images of, uh, I mean, of the comet we collected over the last night. So at least we were able to share the comet. But tonight, Luckily enough, we are able to do this in real time, exactly what we wanted. And I hope this is rewarding for you too. How beautiful this is. And now I will ask the telescope to switch back to a longer exposure time to be sure we could enjoy the coma of the comet even more. Just want to wait for the new, the latest image, the one the telescope is just downloading. Here we are. And then I will try to put here 90 seconds. That is uh, one minute and a half. And again, you see the countdown started here in the upper left and you can track in real time what is happening. The system was asked to take many images back to back. This is image one of a series of basically 1,000. Okay, I'm not taking 1,000. It will take a lot of time to take 1,000 images or 90 seconds. And uh, anyway, just to be sure that this is taking images, okay? I like to share with you also what is happening behind the scene, you know. And hopefully this will uh, help you unveiling the beauty of the sky. And I like to think that people will be a bit more interested to the starry night and what is happening up there after flying with us 
after joining this cosmic cruises offered by the Virtual Telescope Project. And of course, you can contribute, you can support the Virtual Telescope by donations and I want to thank all those who make possible for us to survive. We offer all this for free, you see, but if you want, if you think that our project is uh, worth your support, please consider donating whatever you want, whatever you can, whatever you like, and we will use all this to keep this project alive. And of course, to thank you, we will send back a few things like several exclusive high resolution images we captured over the years and some of them, trust me, are truly perfect to be printed and put on your walls at home, in your office. But also we offer access to the high definition version of this kind of live feed and those who support us are right now enjoying this in uh, high definition with much better definition and this will increase the enjoyment and the realism coming to you from this experience and you can see after 90 seconds the image arrived i'm now adjusting in real time the brightness and contrast just the visualization of the image and look how beautiful it is right now despite the moon we are really enjoying comet Wirtanen in such a very great way so thanks really to all the people supporting the virtual telescope you can do this right away if you want and uh, it will help us to keep all these things running. We have been able to share, to show the wonders of the cosmos for free to several millions of people worldwide. And all this thanks to people supporting us because we have no funding from any institution. We survive thanks to our love for the science of the sky, for the beauty of heaven, and thanks to our supporters. So thanks to them. You have to thank us, hopefully, for making possible for you to enjoy this but you have to thank our really uh, supporters do, those doing donations to us because this is making possible for us to be alive to be as they say up and running and this is comet Wirtanen slowly leaving us after the perihelion the minimum distance from the sun December 12 and then the flyby with the Earth, December 16, two days ago, when it was at 11.5 million of kilometers from planet Earth, a completely safe, huge distance, by the way, and that distance was, anyway, short enough to make Comet Wirtanen the 20th comet ever coming that close. So, basically, we are seeing an object which made something epic, after all. And I'm very happy to see a lot of people trying to locate this comet personally. It is not easy and on the virtualtelescope.au website you will find, if you, surf, if you search the website with Wirtan and keyword, you will find a nice quick guide I wrote to help people really wishing and willing to observe the comet themselves. And tomorrow, by the way, I will also update the map I have there to make possible for you to try to find it. Thank you very much to everyone for making this an event. And I really hope that for you this experience is rewarding as it is for me to share with you. I love sharing what I like, so it's quite natural for me to do this after all. <laughs> the comet is lovely crossing the sky, you see. And we are tracking it live thanks to the Virtual Telescope Project. In Italy, 
and here it is Comet Weird Tunnel in real time again. But if I ask the, the, our system to show, to isolate the heart of the comet, here it is where the nucleus is placed. I just changed contrast and brightness in the image. Nothing different than this. There is a lot of information inside our images, friends. And it is amazing that I can do this on fly right now. And uh, that bright core is where the nucleus is placed, hidden behind the huge cloud of dust and gas released by that small icy world because of the heating from the sun. Okay? It's amazing if you think to this and if you try to imagine what is happening to that very small icy world moving around the sun and uh, giving such a beautiful show we are tracking together live and joined together live thanks to the virtual telescope project truly beautiful at least for me you can see some uh, bright dot dots here they are so-called hot pixels they are typical for with the, this kind of imaging devices so the real objects are the comet here and the stars leaving trails while we are tracking the comet with the telescope so and sometimes from image to image these hot pixels change just underlining they are false alarms And I hope that you are enjoying this experience. Image after image, the comet is leaving us. Now I'm trying to find a compromise, making possible to enjoy the pale coma immediately around the nucleus. Let me see. Let me see if this is enough, but I think that the comet is beautiful anyway. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I cannot imagine now such a similar bright comet in the sky without the possibility to share it with the world. For me, it is quite straightforward doing this. And again, if you want to access the high quality streaming, the best for you to do is to go and uh, subscribe the premium service which is reserved of course to people supporting us we offer everything to everyone but of course this is our way to thank people supporting the virtual telescope the same image if i really use a very strong contrast you can now enjoy how large at least in this image is what we see around the comet very beautiful and uh, we are approaching uh, the end of this live feed I will uh, stop the comment but I will leave the images open it so you can enjoy this again for a while 
And again, I want to thank all the technological partners of the Virtual Telescope Project, and they are Unitron Italia Instruments, Software Bisc, C-Web, Bader Planetarium, Santa Barbara Instruments Group, and Plane Wave Instruments, and all the international media, which made possible for us to reach a lot of people with this opportunity, friends. And uh, I really hope that uh, you will be with us again on the next occasion. And uh, for me, it's always a big pleasure to share with you these stunning uh, things when something great happens in the sky. I'm trying to put together something <clears throat> so I really want to thank all of you for finding the time to join I hope that your time was uh, well spent with us enjoying this comet that we are seeing live thanks to the virtual telescope facility in Italy again let me try to find a better choice for the basic image parameters to see again the core of the comet and for me it has been uh, our pleasure to have the opportunity to have you here on board traveling across space and time and uh, tracking this fascinating visitor of uh, our solar system this icy world that we name, that we call Comet Wirtanen, discovered by Carl Wirtanen from Lick Observatory USA on January 1948. And uh, it is very hard for us to say goodbye to this comet, isn't it? But you know, this is one of the, of the shows that the sky is always ready to offer us. So again, I want to thank all of you and I hope you had such a wonderful time with us. And uh, from Gianluca Massi, Virtual Telescope Project Italy. This is, that's all, and I wish you the very best. And I always suggest you to find some time to look up at the stars. It is always something amazing. I will stop commenting, but I will leave the live images coming for a while. So Gianluca Massi, Virtual Telescope, goodbye to everyone, and keep looking at the stars. Bye.